What's up guys, Econ John here. In this video, we're gonna be covering the third and final part of our diamond model. And we're gonna be talking about the dynamics of capital and dynamic inefficiency. Let's go. So note that in the diamond model, the consumers save their income in the form of capital for the sake of consumption when older. Since there's no depreciation in this model, we can describe the capital accumulation formula as KT plus one is equal to the savings rate as a function of the return on the market in T plus one times LT, AT, and wages per worker, for effective labor, actually. Uh, for specific policy implications, we'd like to write this in per capita terms, uh, this being KT plus one divided by AT plus one times LT plus one, which is the effective labor in period T plus one. So note that we have a couple of interesting terms here. LT all over LT plus one is equal to the inverse of our population growth rate, or one all over one plus N. And AT all over AT plus one is equal to one over one plus G, which is our growth rate in technology. So we end up with KT, right, plus one, which is our capital per effective worker, is equal to our savings rate times the wage per effective labor all over one plus N plus one plus G, right? Knowing that our RT is equal to the marginal product of the capital per effective worker in uh, period one and wt is equal to our output per effective worker minus our capital stock times our return on the market at time t we can re further rewrite this as the following below so now let's talk about the dynamics of k and the balanced growth path in this model the algebra and substitutions on the previous slide have given us the equations to describe kt plus one as a function of kt meaning future capital per effective labor as a function of current capital per effective labor to solve for the balanced growth path we solve where kt plus one is equal to kt here we'll be only considering how capital behaves when production technology is in the economy is with cobb douglas production sets because this type of concave shape does not hold for all production functions right as it could be convex it could be any other type of wacky shape that you can have. Note that in the diamond model, consumers can save their income in the form of capital for the sake of consumption when older. Graphically speaking, our golden rule level of capital is determined when the current and future capital per effective labor are one to one, or when our transformation of current capital of future capital intersects the 45 degree line. So let's talk about dynamic inefficiency. Dynamic inefficiency is a non-Pareto efficient allocation which occurs when our BGP of capital per effective labor exceeds our golden rule level of capital, which is when K star is greater than K golden rule. If this is the case, RT plus one is also lower, right, than necessary. And since the old can only consume what they have saved, they are worse off. The only way to correct this is by direct intervention by a planner, which taxes the capital of the young and distributes it to the old, thus restoring our capital per effective labor back to the golden rule level and therefore increasing the rate of return. This initially seems like an odd result since that given that uh, markets are competitive and there are no externalities, how can we have a non pareto efficient allocation? The answer is that there is another assumption that we didn't really know about is that there exists a finite number of agents, right? In our model, the diamond model, there are an infinite number of them, right? Because it's an infinite overlapping generations model. Right. This occurs when our households are saving too much in when young, right, by investing too much in capital for a good for production. We can visualize this situation graphically. So in terms of visualizing dynamic inefficiency, right, this is where we're at K star, right, which is just past KGR. So our economy would benefit from a planner which will transfer this K star to KGR. So just another thing over here, you can see that we have K prime, right? That is in KGR, this is actually behind it, but it's a Pareto efficient allocation because the dynamics of the economy will pull it towards KGR. So in that case, we would not really benefit from a planner since that is a Pareto optimal allocation. So. That's the series on the diamond model. I hope this video helped. Leave a comment if there is anything that I missed or anything that I need to add and subscribe to this channel. See ya.